Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Excellent. Well, what do you think of uh, uh, Sleepy Joe? Uh, he has really energized the country, hasn't he? <laughs> Yeah, but he's he's crushing it in the polls, apparently. Ah, that's those college polls. You know those broken down schools that can't afford a football team, so they have a poll to. Uh... Well, I hope you're right, just just so I will I will win on my prediction from um, before she ran for Senate that the nominee is going to be Kamala. Really? But she's kind of faded away. What about that Buttigieg? He's like the the rising star. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not putting my money on him. He's sort of a cute version of John Kerry. You mean it's like a little too gimmicky? He's padded up that resume with things, right? And he's a little guy. I mean, he's like a young version of Dukakis. And just looking at the <laughs> the Democratic primary schedule, um, you know, there's the there's Iowa, New Hampshire, and then bam, you go to the South, um, and. Uh, I don't think even with Southern Democrats, largely black Southern Democrats, um, the the husband is going to be a huge hit. <laughs> okay. Um, what about these Democrats? So they always talk about diversity, diversity, diversity. Then they end up with the old white guy, Joe Biden. Uh, I was noticing that. I mean, any any Democrat is going if it if it isn't um, again um, the one Ann Ann is betting on Kamala Harris. Yeah. Um, any Democrat will have to have pr- probably take Kamala Harris as as the VP or or you know a woman definitely definitely a black person. Yeah. Uh, but what because about one of the things? Just a little side note on that. Um, I mentioned this in Resistance is Futile. One of the funniest things about the left's hysteria on you know how how Russia stole the election for Donald Trump <laughs> was um, nobody read it because it was so, so long. But it was actually really hilarious. Um, Mueller's indictment of those fourteen Russians who will never have to you know they'll never have to prove their case in court because the Russians will never show up. So Mueller and his team could say anything. But even even being able to say anything, all they could come up with were these stupid Facebook ads and an Instagram account for woke blacks. <laughs> well, um, and that was a fake Russian account. And seriously, I mean, this was written about in the op-ed page of the New York Times to demonstrate how Russia threw the election um, and they looked at how Hillary didn't get as much of the black vote as Hmm, the first black president, Barack Obama. <laughs> I wonder if there's any other explanation for that, any explanation at all. Um, well, they also don't, they never pointed out the Russians, when they bought these Facebook ads, spent a tiny amount of money and bought very no, few no, ads. No, 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 that's of course, yes, it's, it's a joke. It's like 0.001% of all campaign spending, <laughs> um, and that's what threw the election. Wow, those Russians are clever. If, if they can do it with that amount of money, I hope they are running our country, because they are very efficient. Um, But I suggested to Democrats, rather than believe that it was the woke blacks Instagram account, which was constantly bashing Hillary, um, that they Google the words, this is the last time we vote for an all-white ticket. (laughs) Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, that's pretty big. So yeah, there's it, it's it's they're going to have to have a minority on the ticket. Yeah, I don't know, maybe Cory Booker, maybe Kamala, or maybe Kamala will be the nominee. Hey, Cory Booker is like a two percent, which is like tied with skim milk. So uh, I don't think that's going <laughs> to. No, I must say that is the odd thing about this field because once I, I don't know, once you and I start talking about it, they all look like losers. Uh, but somebody's got to win, Mark. Yeah, but Biden, he goes right back to 1992 with, oh, I got the Firefighters Union endorsement. Who would care about that? Um, it would be valuable if true. And who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he has managed to scam a lot of the blue-collar types. He has he has a nice attitude. I will say, you know, in his defense, this is compared to the rest of the Democratic Party, which has absolutely no no concept of how anyone lives outside of like new york and hollywood um if you remember going back to the 90s um when clinton kept at hillary's direction nominating female attorney generals and they all had illegal alien nanny problems whom they weren't paying social security for yeah everyone in the clinton white house 
um, and to the New York Times. I, I quoted this in, in one of my books. They were all indignant that anyone would be upset. Well, of course we have illegal alien nannies. We've got, we have a jobs at law firms. Um, and uh, Joe Biden had to go to the White House and explain to the Clintons that most families in America don't have nannies. <laughs> Well, that's true. They raise their own kids. <laughs> they cook their own meals. <laughs> but on the other hand, when Joe tries to be working class Joe, it should be pointed out, working class Joe's never even had a job in his entire life. Um, That's true, but I, I can't believe you're putting me in the position of... <laughs> yeah, what the hell's going <laughs> on here? But I have to say, I mean, you could say the same thing, not, not the same thing, but... Um, a similar thing about Donald Trump. He isn't himself working class, but I think uh, during the campaign, he very effectively and beautifully um, spoke on behalf of the working class and seemed to really care about the working class. It was only when he became president that all that fell apart. Yeah, but one thing, if you walk around uh, for years with Donald Trump, you see he always talked to everybody, whether it was uh, yeah. a hot dog vendor, the doorman. He would talk to them forever. He would learn everything about them. No, there was genuine affection and understanding. I mean, I've always thought that, not just about you know Trump and the working class, but about politicians generally. Um, yeah, I made fun of that in, in one of my books. Um, I, I think it may have been Adios America. I don't know why. Um, but they are, no, I think it was in, in Trump We Trust. They always think um, we have to be um, what it is, the, the demographic we're, we're, we're seeking. Um, so in order to get the military vote, we have to, you know, make up some phony military service. <laughs> um, in order to get the Christian vote, we have to go around, you know, having ecstasies on stage. What Donald Trump proved, and which people like you and me, normal, sane people, always knew, no, you don't have to be an evangelical Christian to get the evangelical Christian vote, just to take one example. You have to show that, that you have you're not you're not repulsed by these people <laughs> which is the way most politicians behave yeah and just go spend a lot of time talking to them you'll learn all about them you don't have yeah to- and we have your back we'll defend you we won't you know sick the aclu on you that sort of thing yeah well um now what tomorrow's column can you give us a hint um yes <laughs> I think it may be a 10-part series once oh. I started looking at it. Um, you know, the, uh, you're going to say it's boring, but um, this Charlottesville lie is out of, oh, no, that's, is out of control. That's important. They're totally I lying. I write about it and resistance is futile. Um, I'm writing more about it now. This is the example of fake news. As you know, I'm in no mood to defend Donald Trump right now. Yes. But the press is really hurting America by this incessant lying. Yeah, he never said there's good people on both sides when talking about the Nazis, in fact. uh... He could not have been clearer. It was a beautiful speech, and and as I described in Resistance is Futile, Boy, was he right about one of the things he said over and over again at the at that press conference that set them all on edge was who's next? Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. Well, in the subsequent year, <laughs> we are two years. We have seen statue after statue, Christopher Columbus statues being beheaded, thrown in garbage cans. <laughs> Uh, man, was Trump right about that. Well, it's going to be a great column. It'll come out late tonight. Just go to AnnCoulter.com. You can get it first. And uh, AnnCoulter.com. But get the book Resistance is Futile. It actually goes over all this stuff. You'll be well-armed. Uh, and if you're one of these crazy uh, Democrats, get the book. You'll see what you're doing wrong. <laughs> Resistance is Futile. And follow Ann Coulter on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Thank you, and thanks for not talking about the Mueller report. Oh, okay. (laughs) We'll do that next time. Take care.